Brian Ching meets his former team, an MLS Cup hero gets traded, and a U.S. national teamer scores two off the bench. Next on The Daily. Welcome to The Daily for Thursday, February 9th with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Jason Seguini. The big news yesterday, Brian Ching in action against his old team, the Houston Dynamo. It was Houston that got a 2-0 victory over the impact. Yeah, Colin Clark and Cam Weaver scored the goals, but the big story here is Brian Ching. It's something we've been talking about all season, and maybe have gotten a little too far with at this point. Maybe it's past the, uh, the sell-by date. Brian Ching saying, you know what, I'm feeling comfortable with my team. It's not something that I'm thinking about. Yes, the, maybe the first few minutes were a little bit strange. It felt like training. But in the long run, he's just trying to help Montreal win. On the flip side of that, Dom Kinyer said he watched the first couple of plays. Yes, it felt weird, but at this point, they're moving on. He did refuse to discuss any sort of negotiations between the two teams, so that still could be going on. That's something we'll have to watch. All right, yeah, Kinnear also pointed to Will Bruin's play being very good in this game, which is interesting because it's probably Bruin that's going to step up into that spot that Ching was playing. And now Bruin might have another strike partner as Matt Kanji coming aboard the Houston Dynamo. We'll see if he's able to make an impact. He comes over from the Colorado Rapids. Yeah, the Dynamo have made it clear this offseason they're looking to bolster those forward corps. And now they have a nice mixture of speed and kind of your typical Dom Kinnear guy. Uh, on that side, obviously, as you said, Will Bruin, Cam Weaver, also Colin Rolfe, rookie out of Louisville. But now with Makuma Kanji and also Kalen Carr, they've got two speedy guys that can maybe stretch the defense and open up space for those bigger ones. All right, let us know what you think of the Matt Kanji pickup. Is he going to be a difference maker for the Houston Dynamo? You can put your comments in the section below. With the U.S.-Italy game now 20 days away, Josie Altidore comes off the bench yesterday, scoring two goals in the final 15 minutes to remind Jurgen Klinsmann he should be in the mix for that game. Yeah, Azed already in control at that point when Josie comes off the bench, but two nice finishes for him, two easy finishes, both with the left foot, the first off a simple square pass and an open net, and then one off a, a rebound from a save by the goalkeeper. But those were his sixth and seventh goals in the league this year, a nice return so far for him, 13 goals overall, but it does look like his role will be coming off the bench for now. Yeah, well, it's interesting because he actually, he could be with the U.S. team against Italy, but he also could be in the U23 camp as the U23s now have announced a game on the 29th against Mexico's U23s. So obviously they're um, getting ready for the Olympics. This could be a huge game. He could be there with Caleb Porter. Yeah, they're going to play that game at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Caleb's going to get the, the squad together on the 19th, so have 10 solid days of training before playing that one. The big note there, though, is that he did say that this appears to be at least the beginnings of that final squad that'll go to London. So it'll be interesting to see who gets the call, and, and more than likely, many of those guys will end up being on that team. And we'll continue to update you on the U23 team as they're brought together ahead of a huge year, obviously trying to get into the Olympics. If you want all the updates, you can subscribe here. Before we go, we've been talking a lot about the Philadelphia Union this offseason with a lot of changes. They continued yesterday bringing in Colombian forward Leonard Pahoy. What were your thoughts on that signing? Well, not necessarily a replacement for Sebastian Latou, but he's a 30-year-old Colombian. Probably had his best season here in 2011, uh, but he's a target man. Going to add depth to those rosters. Remains to be seen how he'll adapt to MLS, but he'll be a guy to watch. All right, some other things to check out on MLSsoccer.com. The blog, uh, De Rosario making milkshakes in the offseason, if you're interested in uh, Dwayne De Rosario's offseason activities. And also, later today, a preseason page will come out helping you follow everything going on in the preseason, including highlights of the matches we've seen so far and schedules of the tournaments at the end of the month. There are four big tournaments going on. Be your last chance to see a lot of the MLS teams before the regular season action begins. That's all we have for the Daily Today. We'll be back with more tomorrow.